Hello everyone, this is the Ultimate Batmobile from the Lego Batman movie theme. It is a large vehicle, but it is not hollow. It is very dense inside. Thus, there is a whole lot to look at here, so let me dig right in. Now you can readily see that there is a lot of brick-built detail in this thing. It took me about three hours to put this together. I was not rushing, but I was not going as slowly as I could either. It says on the box, recommended for ages 10 to 16. And I really felt that complexity as I put this together. There are many small details that need to be aligned properly. There are many sub-assemblies that connect to yet other sub-assemblies to create larger combinations of things and they need to be aligned carefully. There's a lot of studs on the side construction. There are a lot of Technic sub-assemblies that have to be put together with multiple pins that have to be kind of coaxed to go together at the same time. It's not for beginning Lego builders. This felt like an advanced model. It also used a lot of stickers. So if you hate those, you've been warned. The good news is that because there is so much brick built detail here, if you choose to leave off the stickers or at least most of them, you're not going to be missing a whole lot. Yes, they add fine texture with some of the signage and the rivets and such, but they're definitely not necessary. There's a lot of both surface texture and just overall shape to this whole thing that you put together with just the parts. They also have enough different colors, enough change of color from part to part and from angle to angle to still show you the lines without having any of those extra decorations added on. The most important feature of this set is that it splits up into multiple substantive vehicles that make sense. You've got a bat wing sort of thing back here, which just lifts straight up. We'll look at that separately. We'll look at each of these assemblies separately. Once you take that off, well, you could also, or even before, you could also just separate out the front section, which is the main part of it, the main Batmobile, if you will. But this back here is also able to kind of close up to make itself look more natural. Now I can pull these things back, pull these things back. This is a vehicle of its own. It has four wheels and tires and stuff that it can do. And there's one more vehicle that's hidden inside of this thing. I'm gonna pull these two kind of engine covers up, slide this right on out. And that was actually Robin inside of there who you could see inside the cabin. He slides right on out with this vehicle, which can be used as a hovercraft like this. But the intent is that you would then rotate these down to create sort of a motorcycle like thing. So there you go, four separate useful vehicles out of one. The main vehicle looks almost good enough to be sold as a set just by itself. The only thing that takes away from it is the open hollow space when you remove the Robin cycle vehicle. And you can see that light just shining right through behind Batman. I like the red lines that go down the sides, which are continued onto some of the other vehicles as well with the studs on the side construction. The Stickers do really help with that. I like the grill at the front, it uses interesting parts. They've got four stud shooters here to actually physically shoot with. Those fire off uh, silver studs and they give you some extras of those. And then they've got, you know, pretend things that you can shoot from. These can be rotated around. It's a little bit hard, but you can make those turn. These can represent uh, some sort of shooting thing, some sort of cannon up there, some sort of gun. These can come out on the sides to represent guns as well. And you've got the fins and you've got the boosters on the back. I like what they did with the wheels. Again, you can leave the stickers off if you want. They still look good. You know, just the, just the, the kind of pinstriping that they've, they've set up with this thing. And you can put the boosters down if you want to. You know, that actually takes up some of the, the space in the back so it doesn't look quite as open and it rolls perfectly fine the way that they've set up the axles. You can actually cause these things to pinch up a little bit. It's another place where you need to exercise some care, but you know, just with standard technic uh, protocols of putting things together, making sure that you have looseness in axles, it'll actually run quite nicely with these semi pneumatic real rubber tires that are of a good size and it has a decent amount of ground clearance. So you can take this over carpet. Yes, those stickers do say Recreational Vehicle. 
Now this has the backwards X-Wing style uh, canopy, which I think actually looks pretty good like that. And they definitely give it a good space here to fit in with the help of these bars that are connected along the sides that provide just a little bit of, of framing for the thing so that you don't get some awkward gaps. This just opens forward. Batman himself has to lean back quite a bit, but uh, there's, a, there's enough angle there that it doesn't look like he's entirely just staring at the sky when he's at the controls. He does have a steering wheel down in there and that is way, way far away from his, his hands, unfortunately. And there's no detailed console or anything inside. Robin's bike is obviously small and fairly simple, so it's gonna be the least impressive of the items here. It's nice to get those quarter round tile pieces and also the trans yellow uh, kind of tooth pieces used on it. So some nice parts and also this red harness piece that's used to create a little bit of a, a roll cage around him. It is unfortunate that his hands have to go up so far to grab onto the handlebar. Uh, handlebars there, it, it would have been nicer to, to have a, a lower placement for that. And it's got the, the exhaust pipes on the back which are angled up. Nothing that you can actually do with this other than just drive it around. It doesn't have anything that that shoots off. However, I do very much like the transformation to this form because this seems like a better way to actually use this vehicle. Use it as a hovercraft, use it as a speeder, something that could actually, you know, fly around a little bit. And you just imagine it leaning in turns, and especially with how excited he looks, it just looks like this is what he would prefer to do as opposed to riding it more as a bike. Now this winged vehicle to me is absolutely perfect. This definitely could have been sold as its own thing. I love everything about this. I feel like they did nothing with this wrong. It has a lot of detail. It has nice lines that are consistent from front to back. It has different techniques that are used. You can alter the angles of the wings if you want them to be up like this, if you want them to be down like this. You know, it's, it's actually useful for attaching the thing and making it look more more like it fits into the whole Batmobile itself, but it's something that you can use in the air and I like. You've got different thrusters on the back. It has two spring-loaded shooters that you can operate from the back here as well. I guess this area doesn't look that great, but it doesn't look that bad. I mean, they even added in some extra texture in this section here, which they didn't need to, but that really helps with the look of the thing, makes it look more like this is intentional, all the stuff on the back. I like the angles of these parts here for the, the stabilizers. These small builds were nice. I, I don't think I've seen Lego do that before. This is a, the, the core of it is a flick fire missile and they use this relatively new uh, spacer, Technics uh, spacer piece to fit over that gives it just some nice shaping, nice shaping all throughout, nice small details. Uh, the pilot does have to angle up just a little bit, but it's not too bad. Yeah, it's, I mean, and again, the use of this same type of canopy piece in reverse to give a nice shape that just looks good to me. Good use of these vertical fins on the sides to help frame that. So again, you don't get a lot in the way of gaps. There's a little bit of gap there, but that's perfectly acceptable to me. This opens up and it does have a console that's a, a sticker piece right there showing some status of what's going on with the craft and it has two control sticks as well. What more could I possibly ask for? And then there's this thing which reminds me just a little bit of the Arkham Asylum Batmobile because of the, the whole cab forward structure of it. This is very heavy. Uh, surprisingly heavy for its size. It doesn't look particularly interesting from the side, but it does have a lot of very intentional shaping that's built into it. And this one has to do the most work of any of the modules to adapt to the ultimate Batmobile form. You know, you have these parts that get turned in because this becomes the back of the ultimate Batmobile. So these are thrusters for that. But in this form, you could see them as as cannons or some sort of shield generator array or some sort of sonic weapon or something. You know, you can use your imagination for that, but it's intended to be driven like this. I appreciate the inclusion of extra details down here, you know, just on the parts that normally are hidden away. So that makes it look more complete when it's in this standalone form. This section back here on the roof moves a lot 
when you're putting it into the Ultimate Batmobile combination. This has to sit on the roof of the front section and it also creates the docking bay for the, the aircraft. And there is a, oh, so these two clips here are the things that connect to the, the main section. That's, that's one thing that's not done all so well, is that those two clips are the only things that connect the, the main Batmobile, the main front to this rear. So if you try to pick the whole thing up from the back, then the front will tend to, to fall off. That is something to watch out for. But this is able to shoot more than anything else in the set can because it has these two six stud shooters, one on either side. So that's a lot of firepower that's available there, more than with anything else. And uh, it's, it's valuable in that sense. And it does roll around just fine. It does have four wheels. You know, it's not scraping the back of it as not quite so much uh, ground clearance, especially at the rear, but it's able to run around just fine. It's a nice sturdy structure and they've used that same canopy piece here, but in kind of the correct way, if you will, the originally intended way. It just makes for a different look. I think it looks good. It's, there's not a lot for uh, driving compartment here. The entire compartment is angled in such a way that the pilot or the driver here is angled back a lot, but yet it doesn't look like he's looking at the sky. Again, it's it's good enough. You know, it looks like he's looking out towards the front. A lot of these vehicles and craft that Lego does have the driver or the pilot leaning practically on their back and it just looks silly to me, but this actually works. And he has two control sticks there, probably tank style control, and he has another console and that is just another sticker. Plus, behind the cockpit is storage for minifig weapons. So a couple of katanas there, a couple of batarangs, one for Batman, one for Batgirl, and more stickers, <laughs> of course, but those just represent consoles. That's a place where you could bring some figures in. You probably want to remove the weapons first and remove those clips to actually allow a figure to sit down in front of one of those. You might be able to do a little bit of rearrangement to make that work better for you. But again, it's nice to get more small detail inside of this thing. One last thing that gets built is this bat signal. It's the largest bat signal I believe that LEGO has released as an official set. It is the third bat signal that we've gotten for the LEGO Batman movie. So there was this one, which was a nice build. They also did a really small one as well. Now, these used printed tile pieces to give you the, the bat signal itself, that, that shape. This one uses a printed dome, trans black or trans brown dome piece, and it has inside of there a light brick. You push on this little button on the back of it, and a light brick actually lights up. Now that is able to transmit through there, and the light brick gives you uh, light that is sufficiently focused to actually project a bat image onto a wall. It doesn't have infinite distance, uh, because of just the, the, the light itself is only but so bright. But it really does work and you don't even need to have a room completely dark to be able to see that effect. That is very nicely done. And this is able to rotate around 360 degrees. You could probably see this as, as a switch for minifigs to actually pull to turn on and off. But for us huge figs, as humans, we use this. And it has just a, a little friction gear on the side to keep it from falling down and falling around. So this is also very nice and it's able to even point straight up. So if you want to project on the ceiling, you can do that as well. Well done. Minifig wise, of course, Batman and Robin are included in this set, but they're really not big deals here because there are plenty of ways to get them and they're in just their regular outfits for the Lego Batman movie, as is Batgirl over on the right. They're all nice figures, but this Alfred Pennyworth in bat suit outfit is a much more special thing to me. Has that nice print for the hat. It's exclusive, has his exclusive face print and has the exclusive torso print. Makes that a particularly collectible figure in my opinion. Uh, my favorite, that is my favorite out of all three of these, but I also very much appreciate the side printing on the legs and the arms for Batgirl and also the dual molded legs and dual molded arms 
for Robin. So really, Batman is the least interesting thing here to me personally. Of course, Batgirl gets her ponytail that is attached to the back of the outfit. She has her alternate face, no alternate face for Alfred because he has to always show his head, the back of his head. Good alternate face for Robin, pretty plain one for Batman there. This is a new style cape. This is a new style cape in terms of the, the soft material, but these are the older style that are more crinkly and you can't just flip them up without causing damage. So with those removed, you can see the rest of the back prints for the torsos, which are pretty good. And I want to especially call out the small little freckled dots on the sides of, of Robin. Just very, very tiny details that are, are nice to get in there, that add a lot, of, uh, a lot of texture, even though it's small and subtle. And here are the normal faces without any pieces of headgear obscuring them. I've really been looking forward to Polka Dot Man. I think he's going to prove to be a, a particularly popular figure. And I'm happy that they included the stand for him as well. That's a new piece for Lego. It's a 4x4x1/3 four by four by modified tile piece with two studs in the center. And it's an exclusive print for this set specifically to go with. Polka Dot Man himself. The print actually extends beneath the feet. Here's a closer look at just the figure as well as the Wicked Witch. Why is the Wicked Witch included in a Batman set? Because it's from the Lego Batman movie, which is spun off from the Lego movie. So they're able to use a little bit of imagination, cross themes, and cross dimensions, if you will. Now, as far as the comparison between this version of the Wicked Witch and the version that we got previously for LEGO uh, Dimensions, it's close. It's very close. As a matter of fact, it's possible it's supposed to be identical, but these were just done in different batches, possibly on different machines, the way they were printed. There are slightly different thicknesses in some of the lines, but I think they're supposed to actually be exactly the same. Now, Polka Dot Man has printing all over him. He's got printing on the sides of the legs and the, the bits of dots that cross from the front to the sides are lined up very well. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. They miss just a little bit underneath the, the leg where the, the curve comes to an end. And there's just a little bit of gap there, but all told, I think it's a pretty exciting looking figure, uh, a pretty cool looking thing. I'll, probably be looking for an, an extra one of these myself just to have an extra set of these interesting parts even has nice printing on the top of the helmet alternate face for this guy is pretty significant uh, very very expressive and there is a nice back print for the wicked witch but she does not get an alternate face because of the type of headgear that she wears which would show that alternate face all of the time and there's just a clearer look at their faces with one of them a little bit askew Last but not least, there are two flying monkeys included for the Wicked Witch to command. I'm surprised they actually came up with two separate face prints for them. It's a nice little luxury. Dual molded heads to get the two major colors there. Dual molded arms as well, with printing on the sides of those arms. The colors, the major colors there are sand blue and the lighter than medium blue color that I tend to call baby blue or powder blue. It's a bright, light, royal blue or something like that. Not medium blue, it's, it's lighter than that. The Minotaur style legs done in sand blue with printing on the front. They got the tails there, which are reversible, but if you reverse them with the wings on, they tend to get in the way. Now those are soft pieces, so they can bend a little bit. Let me take some of this stuff off. And there's the back printing for the torsos. No alternate faces for these heads because they are molded all together as one piece. It's not over a regular minifig head underneath. These are so much better looking than the buildable one they did for LEGO Dimensions, but it does give me a, a good amount of extra respect for the build of that original one because the proportions are really good. And if you kind of blur your eyes, you can, you can really see what they were going for. Given that it's made of bricks, that was actually a very good effort. Final analysis, I think this is a fantastic set. If you want a challenging build, a lot of playability with the finished product, and you're willing to look at things in a silly way. I really feel this is one of the most serious silly sets that LEGO has ever made, and it's well done. 
So that's it for my look at this set, and now it is your turn, as always, to share what you think about it with myself and the rest of the viewers by leaving a comment down below with your honest opinions, including if you like this, if you dislike this, or if you have kind of a list of your favorite and least favorite things. I appreciate your time, thank you for watching, and I'll be talking to you again soon.